So again, you know, uh, we need those big sweeping arms, right? Because that's his cape. So you see how it's got a lot of triangular shape. So I'll I'll bring this right through because now I get that backside of his sweeping cowl, right? And then this line, if we use dotted lines to show you what's going through, even though I'm whipping these lines out, is that back spot that's usually in shadow, and this part's usually in shadow. And then I just come up from that, and I do my fat neck that I like, and the round of the head, and I come back down, and I carry this line that's here, dot, 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 and I just pick that line up here. And this so you're, you're, you're paying attention to a great effect. Think about this, this, this is the red, this is the red of the cow. Right, so this is an assume, edge. Assume the inside of the cow was black. Let's just say outside's red, inside's black. So he's got black, which is shadow, and that's sweeping up here, and then it's twisting. So now this is showing the inside right here. So now he's actually twisted that piece. So he's gone inside, outside, and then back to the inside. So that's why it's going black, red, black. Right, so I'll do the same thing on there. Here's the inside of the cake. This would be the outside edge. Flops over. Uh, see, see, so it's about taking these triangular shapes and flopping them and twisting them. And then, and, and then I'll keep it a little different. We won't make it a solid black. We'll go, here's the cast shadow, spawns head inside of the cowl. So he's giving him a light source? So this, this gives you dimension. When you have a light source, because shadow defines form. We know the form exists based on the shadow. Without shadow, we wouldn't be able to tell things, how things are shaped. When we come through, we give those big signature eyes that he has. And being the light, you see, being he's casting shadow, light's coming from this way. So we give it some dimension by putting some shadow on this side of his face. We know his face is round. Come down here. Let's get the uh, angry teeth, which sound like what? <laughs> and we file that perspective because I've kind of got it going like this, see? So we'll carry that same look. Grr. Put a little black around his eyes to make him look darker and scarier. A few squiggly hairs because I like hamburger head a lot. <laughs> so yeah, and then I just go and I put, you know, circles, nonsense, draw a few lines through those, you know, in the direction that maybe muscle would fall. All right, now we've, now we've got this big piece here so we can cast some shadow across Spawn's face and make him look darker and scarier. So the shadow's cast across his face, which puts those growling teeth in deep shadow, which I think is really cool when you just see the floating teeth in the black going grr. Mm -hmm. Boom, and then, then I like those big giant, I like big shoulders so I get that with the cape, which makes, and you can make it real exaggerated because it's a cape and it's alive and it moves, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I give them nice and wide and I get the dangerous points, look like it can hurt you. And again, we can use this now to cast the shadow down here. But to pop this piece out that we have here, we have the nice skull, which is strategically placed for that. And we put the little skull in there, a little cast shadow under the skull to show it has dimension as well. Cast shadow on the cape like that. A few lines of tension lines. That the wrinkle. You got the wrinkles. Got in the there. wrinkle. And you know, again, we got the we got the telltale skulls holding everything together. Put one right in there, and that's where all the tension's being held. We can throw a little more shadow down in here. Make it a little, little more dramatic. And of course, the <coughs> symbols on his chest over here come through. Backing this up a little bit. And here we go, I'm running out of road. Running out of road, but you get the idea. And you know what? I'm going to cast a little shadow on here too. Just because I think it looks cool. Alright, and, and I'll do one real quick, which is a character that looks nothing like Spawn. A, a favorite of mine. So, uh, Again, it's completely about, you know, if anybody likes Spawn, it's probably not going to like the character because there's no similarities.
that's a, another character that I, that looks completely different. <laughs> right, right there, really like our guy. Here, I'll do a quick, I'll do a quick spawn hit, and then we'll get going here. Um, I, I'll do a quick little profile one because again, if you're going to do quick little sketches, they're they're pretty easy to do. I'll bring a sketch. I, this is I, I don't recommend doing what I do, but you know I just done that time. I actually sort of lay in the eye real quick, and then I put in spawn sort of mark right here, and you've got you've got that that cool sort of mark that you've got in here, and then and then I can come in now with the head. Here's a, here it is here. Got a little bit of a pouting lip. You've got a cool jaw. Boom. He comes up in here. I lay, I, just like Greg's saying, I, I throw the big sort of cowl off to the side here. The rest of this sort of goes up in here. He's got his neck sort of curls up here, this cape here. Got the skull. Can't forget the skull. Got to do a little bit of change stuff. So you just put some blobs in there real quick. Let me see if I can make this big here. And, and this even allows us to, to color pretty quick, too. I can actually get in here. Color it real quick. And then you want the, the cowl on the other side. And again, depending on how much you want to cast shadows on it, like Greg was saying, come in here and start adding some of that. And you come cut this, and then you add just a little bit of detail up in here, so it looks like he's sort of frowning. This is this is where again what, what we haven't talked to you about is what probably makes Greg and I artwork somewhat appealing to you guys is that all that detail and nicky knack stuff that sort of becomes the last piece once we've got all the basics that are down. We then start coming in with all the rendering pieces that, that get in there, and we can then come in. Well, let me see this smaller here. I can come in here and cut some of this up in here. And you can you, and you get there you get there pretty quick. You can get there. Again, like I said, Greg and I have had the luxury of of doing this for so long that a lot of this stuff we can do in our sleep fairly quickly and we know to lay the shadows in. I was sleeping just then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and before we go, ladies and gentlemen, let me let me just uh, besides uh, thanking you guys all for coming. Uh, I just want to brag on my uh, good friend here, uh, Greg Capullo, who uh, is going to be doing some Batman work in the future. Yeah. So he can't talk about it. And even when I ask him, he's like, going, I can't talk to you about it, Todd. I can't talk to you about it. <laughs> I'll be uh, but, sued. But, but, but I know it's going to be big because they wouldn't be getting the best guy in the business not to do it. So I think you said they're going to make an announcement in June? In two weeks, second week in June, they're going to be announcing what project and then everybody will know the writer, the title. And all that, but yeah, I'm already uh, working on the pages right so now. So, though I usually don't like to promote the competitors, <laughs> because I I, I I love this man so much. He, he, he's done such a great job. I'm telling you, he will draw a great Batman for you. So anybody that's interested in that character, when you hear the news, go and get the book that Greg's doing. It's going to knock your socks off. Appreciate you guys coming out and having a good time.